Now, we are gearing up for the TT Agri Investment Forum and Expo 2, scheduled to take place from this Friday, August 19th to the 21st in Port of Spain. Now, in addition to conversations among CARICOM leaders on how to reduce this region's food import bill, the Forum and Expo promises over 300 exhibitors in a variety of sectors. There's also a mega farmer's market, which is set to be showcased. And joining me to talk more about this is the CEO of the National Agricultural Marketing and Development Corporation, or NAMDEFCO, Ms. Namala Devi Singh. Ms. Devi Singh, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, they've been touting it as the mega farmer's market, the farmer's market of all farmer's market. What can we look forward to? You can look forward to unique local commodities produced right here on our local farms. But more importantly than unique, it comes from certified farms. And that's the selling point of all of our farmers' markets. It means that the produce that you buy at those markets are verifiably safe for consumption and they offer all of the nutritive value that you want in your food. You can look forward to some unique things such as land-grown rice. Hill rice. Land-grown rice. Yeah. Or from the Maruga. Right. right. Okay. You can look forward to hikima. You can look forward to um, something called sulong cucumbers, which has a diverse number of uses in menu applications. You can look forward to a rhizome that resembles ginger, but offers a lot more flavonoids and a lot more properties. It's known as galangal, uh, something that we're not very familiar with. But this mega farmer's market offers Trinidad and Tobago and the CARICOM visitors the opportunity to see just how versatile our soil is to produce unique food items. That's so in demand in our restaurant industries, our catering industries. If we're preparing meals for children, it can really help to diversify your menus, your nutritive offering to your families and your friends and business opportunities. Let's not forget to mention <laughs> of that. Of course, the business opportunities. Yes. Now, going back to the farmers, though, um, these are organically produced products that we're going to be seeing? Let's not say organic. Let's say they're produced safe. Okay. They're produced utilizing good agricultural practices. And in these good agricultural practices, the farmers are monitored for their practices. Records are kept, and that's very, very critical. More importantly, we offer that technical exchange of information whereby we visit the farms every four to six weeks on a rotation to identify what the farmers are doing, to verify what they're doing, and to support their monitoring, which is very critical in today's global food chains. We need to know where our food comes from. We need to verify that it is safe. And these farmers markets offer that opportunity so that when you go to the farmers market and you purchase an item, you have the opportunity to really get intimate with your food know where your food comes from, how the farmer harvests it, how the farmer cares for it, what they utilize to grow that food to make sure that when you consume it, you gain all of the benefits of that food and then no negative benefits to you or your family. Right. Now, in addition to the produce, will we also have, let's say, grains or seeds that we can buy so that we can go home and plant our own gardens as well? There will be items to purchase, but let me tell you, there will be a host of giveaway items mm. as well. So Namdevco is also promoting and continues to promote home gardens. You know, um, with the change in lifestyle now, we, we see a lot of, um, you know, diseases, but it's always good to grow your own because you appreciate, you learn to eat at home, you learn to value how the fa our farmers grow our produce and care for it and bring it to market. So there will be seeds and seedling giveaways as well, yes. And I think I read there will also be live demonstrations as well. There will be live cooking demonstrations. Nice. And this is a follow-up to our um, recent live demonstrations on the use of sweet potato and cassava flour. So there will also be live cooking demonstrations using, of course, total local produce. There may be a few imported items because there are your seasonings that we don't produce here, but complement the meal nevertheless. But yes, there will be live cooking demonstrations, uh, probably three per day with different chefs using different local menu items. And what day is the farmer's market and what time can people visit? So farmer's market kicks off at 2.30 p.m. on Friday and it operates every day um, Saturday and Sunday 
uh, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. And then Friday, as I said, the kickoff is at 2.30 p.m. And it goes all the way until 10 p.m. Sounds nice. Now, in terms of the Agri Expo, because of course this would have been um, the Prime Minister continuing conversations that he started in Guyana. Yes. What sort of benefits do you see Namdevco gaining from this uh, Agri Expo and forum? The benefit for Namdevco is through our stakeholders. Our stakeholders stand, uh, stand to benefit. This is a forum where farmers, agri processors, commercial points of sale, can see it all come together. Here you have an offering of all of the players along the food value chain coming together so that you can identify, you can improve, you can learn about some of the new offerings in technology, in equipment, in input supplies, in um, produce and varieties that are available for market and marketing opportunities and that's the benefit it holds and it's also supported by the food security forum where our caricom leaders are going to come together to speak about the food security needs of the caricom islands which is very very critical because our food security starts from our producers and starts with our producers i should say so there are a host of benefits to take away from the Expo One Forum. Now, I like that you mentioned food security because one of the main things that they're trying to do or to uh, actually accomplish with this forum is to reduce the region's uh, food import bill by 25% by 2025. But that also calls for a buy-in from us as consumers. And so how do you get consumers to buy into, you know, eating local and, and growing local rather than having to import everything all the time? My answer is not selfish, but it is simple. <laughs> To get them to do that, it must be the only thing that's available. Mm. If, if you have to encourage change in food habits and in food patterns and consumption patterns, when you go to buy food, it must be total local. So there has to be a paradigm shift into what our restaurants are offering, what our catering services are offering, what our homes are offering. So that in that way, we get persons to eat more local, to appreciate local. What must they be saying? While we are pushing for local, local is sometimes more expensive than sometimes the imported brand or sometimes the knockoff brand. So how can we get, especially coming out of the economy like we did with, with the COVID-19 pandemic, how can we still get people to buy into a local brand that might be a little bit more expensive? You know, based on the economies of scale, if the demands are there, we can increase production and we can actually bring down the cost that food is being offered to us as citizens locally. We don't have transportation costs to, to pay. We don't have a host of handling costs to pay when we buy local food. And buying local food means that we encourage our farmers to produce more. It means that it encourages sustainable food production systems that in themselves can help to mitigate against the rising cost of producing food. It, it creates avenues for farmers to invest in new technologies, to do things differently, to gain more support from government initiatives. So all of these players has to come into one, but it is a market-driven demand. The demand must be the pull of the market to help all the way down to the first part of the food chain to grow food based on low input costs, reduced cost of production, to help to bring food to the table that is more affordable. And that, uh, that is one way that we can help to reduce the cost of food made available. You know, I wanna tell you something. Despite the pandemic, our farmers have continued to produce. So our most recent data shows that in the last three months, and this is nothing different to the previous three months. We have brought to the table approximately 6.5 million pounds of produce in three months. Now this is based on data from 3,500 plus farms. And these are the farms who volunteered to join NAMDEFCO's farm certification and monitoring program. So there is food available. It is now incumbent on us to support the local farmers and to support the local sector, buy local, so that our farmers will increase their production. 
But Mr. Bissing, again, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm just being devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. We want to support the farmers. We want to buy local. But how is it that I will go in the market this week and I will see sweet peppers at $8 a pound, and then I go to the market next week and sweet peppers are $15 a pound? What, uh, what can I say would have warranted that price increase? Sustainable food production systems. We need farmers to be assured that when they grow today, there is a market available for them. So NAMDEFCO has quite recently also looked at developing and bridging that gap between farms and commercial buyers. And we have started it through a particular restaurant chain. I won't reveal their name right now, but it is important to know that some of the foods in our one of our biggest restaurant chains actually comes from our local farmers. And by developing such business relations, farmers are able to grow more sustainably. Sometimes, if you're a small-scale farmer, a medium-scale farmer, you may grow a crop not knowing where your market is. And you may just sell the produce because you don't want it to spoil on your hands. And obviously, you want to make a return on your investment. But if you're growing towards a secure market, a sustainable market, a market that demands your produce, then it encourages you to change your farm management practices in an attempt to ensure that, to ensure that there is always food available and there is always something to take to market because your market is sure. Yes. Now, I know that we are looking towards 2025 as the goal to achieving reducing the food import bill. But you would have mentioned, you know, sustainable practices as maybe some of the reasons why um, farmers may want to increase their prices to ensure that they get a profit. And I'm wondering what other sorts of challenges do you see might prevent us from reaching this goal? Because I know you mentioned total local, right? But I'm not sure how it's going to work in our local context. So if we don't use a total local, what other challenges can you see us, uh, or, or what other challenges can you anticipate that may prevent us from getting to that goal of 2025? You know, climate change is a big umbrella. It, it has impacted significantly on the agriculture sector. and. Um, research is doing as much as possible to bridge that gap of climate change and the impact that climate change has had on production. Uh, we're looking at, you know, increased input costs. We're looking at pests and diseases that we've not normally and traditionally seen. So these are some of the issues that we have to mitigate. And again, climate change, because of its ubiquitous nature, it's very difficult, but again, there is a need to bridge that gap between research and commercialization, and we can do that successfully through um, PPPs, you know, having more PPPs between our research institutions and our commercial arms. And those are some of the ways that we can reduce some of the future challenges that we may face and some of the ch big challenges that we are facing right now to ensure that food and nutrition security is maintained and more importantly, as you mentioned, food is affordable and available to all. Of course. Now, one of the reasons why these farmers are going to the uh, forum, of course, is because they want some sort of investment, right? Because, I mean, they are going to be on a regional scale with other CARICOM uh, people actually coming in to showcase their product. What sort of type of investment is NAMDEFCO looking for for these farmers? We are looking for the farmers, to investment for the farmers, mm -hmm. right? So we want farmers to invest in one certification programs. Mm. It's absolutely important if you want to market your food on a global scale, even to the CARICOM, that you are assuring your market of some level of, um, in some cases, food safety, some level of sustainable production practices to ensure that you can also always meet the market demand. And so we are offering to farmers, and, and I'm talking on NAMDEF, of course we have, the opportunity for good agricultural practices certification. It's a GAP standard that was approved by the TTBS. It was cabinets approved as well, and we want farmers to invest in it. And by investing in it, it also means that farmers has to um, invest themselves into different production systems that will meet the demands of the standard. Um, looking at new technologies is absolutely critical as I mentioned also, it will support some of the climate change uh, factors that we have to mitigate against. The investment into ICTs. ICTs is, I mean, it's growing among our youth, but we know our farming population, they're not predominantly youth. 
but we want our farmers to use ICTs, to use e-marketing platforms. Um, because I was going to ask, what type of technology are you talking about? Are you talking about, let's say, modern farmer, uh, farming practice in terms of the aquaponics or the e-marketing? But I think you just mentioned it. Yeah, it's it's e-marketing. It's, it's the ability to implement and utilize what we're calling the big buzzword blockchain technology. Yes. So we want our farmers to be able to, you know, utilize technology on farm to make smart decisions, to help them to make decisions that is going to make their job as farmers easier. You know, quite recently, and this is not recent, but um, as recent as, but we've uh, collaborated with the Cropper Foundation to bring about the FarmView app and that FarmView app was developed directly to help farmers with their record keeping, which is a critical aspect of the GAP certification program. Even for the professionals, for agri-professionals, there is the um, plant-wise diagnostic app where you can use um, an app to help to diagnose diseases on the field and recommend solutions to the farmers you know, right, right there at that point in time. Yes. And for the farmers, NEMDEFCO is also on the verge of utilizing GIS to help to forecast production data real time. And that is so critical in a world where you're dealing with um, commodities that are very perishable, that in the blink of an eye, you can, God forbid, lose a crop yes, due to diseases spoil, yeah. or weather pattern yes, changes. Yes. But this technology that we're investing in offers us the opportunity to look at what is being grown in Trinidad and Tobago, track growth, and to be able to identify to the market what is coming onto the market before it's actually harvested. And I think that is critical. Real-time data for foods that have a shelf life of a few days is absolutely critical. We're also improving our NAMDEVCO platforms to support more buyers and sellers meeting on a e-forum. E so we want to encourage persons to utilize the technologies to buy and sell online because it's it's where it's going it is where it's going and appreciate that food is very perishable especially fresh foods that are, have no value added to it uh, so these things need to happen very quickly and then of course there's the the ability to have confidence in the buyer that they're going to get their money and in the seller that they are going to get value for their money as well and we also um very um, close to launching our new uh, website that offers a database with a host of data. I mean, we are talking about data in excess of 10 years mm -hmm. that can help you to, uh, you know, make and identify trends in the sale of foods, different times of the year, the volumes that come into the market, and more importantly, price. Mr. Debbie Singh, this sounds like an amazing job that Nam Namdevco is doing, and I thank you for doing it for the farmers. Quickly before we go, though, just tell us where we can get more information about the farmers market. At the farmers market, you can get more information from Namdevco's website, Namdevco's Instagram page, Namdevco's Facebook page. Um, yeah, all of our social media <laughs> offerings. Nice. Yeah. Ms. Debbie Singh, it's always a pleasure to have you in. Thank you so much. And it's all the wonderful. best with the mega farmer's market that's happening this Friday. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here. Of course. And that was Ms. Namala Devi Singh, the CEO of Namdevco, just telling us about this mega farmer's market that's going to kick off the TT Agri Investment Forum and Expo that's taking place from this Friday until the 21st of August. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. Stay with us. Well, I like to welcome you to our farm. See, this is a music